the revolting truth about the personal hygiene of the royal females. Despite the magnificence of palaces up to the 18th century, which displayed an abundance of art, grandeur, and romance, the majority of royal females smelt fairly awful by today's standards, since they lacked basic personal hygiene. Here's the truth about the hygiene standards at the royal palaces behind the Royal Regal Beauty Regimen. You might know what many medieval kings and queens looked like. Have you ever wondered what they smelled like? Which monarchs barely ever took a bath? Get a sniff into some regal tubs right here. After a royal party had settled at a palace, a stench would quickly develop due to improperly disposed of food, animal waste, vermin from or drawn to unclean bodies, and human excrement, which accrued in underground chambers until it could be removed. Because of the frequent fires, the passageways would get so thickly coated with grit and soot that they were nearly black. The court's membership was so dense that it would be pointless and impossible to do a complete home cleaning. Royal courts were typically dirtier than the typical small cabin or home, despite the medieval, renaissance, and regency era's subpar cleanliness standards. The royal ladies are known for their grandeur, which included well-to-do nobles, gilded buildings, and well-kept gardens. The truth about hygiene, however, showed that life among the royal ladies was probably dirtier and more offensively smelling than most people realize. After all, hundreds of people shared a 17th century castle without the comfort of contemporary plumbing. Royal Women in Versailles Although it has a reputation for luxury, life at Versailles for both royal women and servants was no cleaner than the slum-like surroundings in many European towns at the time. The women of the royal chapel raised their skirts so they could urinate without being seen, while the men urinated off the central balcony. Historian and author of Versailles, a biography of a palace, Tony Spaforth, claims that Marie Antoinette once went across an internal courtyard while being hit by human feces thrown from the window. Antoinette's heavily used latrines frequently poured into the beds below them while blockages and corrosion in the palace's iron and lead pipes were known to occasionally poison everything in the Marie kitchen. Spaforth claims that not even the bedrooms of the royal children were safe. If the royal family had left Versailles on occasion, the palace might not have experienced as many structural problems. Catherine the Great's dynasty was one of the most infamous in history, yet it shared many unpleasant traits with other illustrious dynasties of the past, stale air, excessive crowding, overflowing chamber pots, and infested furniture. Even though paintings of Louis XIV's extravagant court at Versailles represent royals in gorgeously embroidered apparel, modern viewers are missing one of the primary effects of their finery, the smell of hundreds of dirty clothes gathering in one small enclosed space. Aside from that, King Charles II of England reputedly allowed his flea-infested spaniels to sleep in his bedroom, which made the entire court dirty and stinky and was very uncomfortable. The Condition of the Restroom The Versailles contained 700 rooms and was surrounded by acres of grounds. And by 1789, the year the French Revolution began, the city had only nine restrooms with flushing toilets. The vast majority of them were reserved solely for the consumption of members of the royal family. However, even acquiring a chamber pot, when there was a need for one, could prove to be problematic, as the book This is Versailles claims that there were only about 300 of these available. What did one do when the urge to use the restroom finally overcame them? You just went. Even the ladies. The Duc de Saint-Simon recounted the story of the Princesse de Harcourt in his Memoirs of Louis XIV and his court and the Regency. According to the Duc de Saint-Simon, the Princess de Harcourt would overindulge in food and drink and then immediately relieve herself from the effects thereof, which drove the servants who were responsible for cleaning up after her crazy. She would simply explain that she had been sick, even though she was never in the least embarrassed. According to what he heard, she wouldn't even stop walking before releasing it, dribbling along as if it were someone else's problem to deal with. Even if women were adamant about avoiding relieving themselves whenever and wherever the urge struck, they would still see men doing it regularly. It was reported that the monarch could even relieve himself while operating a carriage without anyone noticing. As a result of all the human waste that was present everywhere, even the most luxurious palace in Europe 
reek to high heaven. Therefore, it is likely that the reason women carried fans, smelling salts, and bouquets was less about fashion and more about getting through the day. No restrooms. Bathrooms equipped with flush toilets, cesspools, and drainage systems did not become the norm until the 19th century. In the palace's halls and gardens, commerce was conducted. In 1715, it was determined that the feces from the stairwells would be cleaned out once a week. Initially, the palace's lavatories consisted of little more than long wooden benches with holes cut out of the middle. Blockages and corrosion in the palace's iron and lead pipes were known to occasionally poison everything in Marie Antoinette's kitchen and the heavily used latrines often poured into the beds below them. Dress worn by royals A courtier might take baths, be rubbed down, and brush his teeth to no avail. The clothes they wore would still absorb and retain odors no matter how clean they were. Clothing worn on top of the linen of the undergarments, chemises, and shirts could be boiled and washed relatively readily, but the materials worn on their own were not. The number and variety of garments available to a given courtier would vary widely according to their status and means, whereas Madame de Montespan might choose from a wide variety of garments, a lady of lower social standing could have only a few options, which she would then customize with a variety of shawls, lace, brooches, and pearls. The clothes were a pain to keep clean, whether there were a lot or a few of them. Clothing worn at court had to be created from very particular fabrics, and the price of the state robes, worn at the most lavish parties, might be higher than the annual salary of some of the nobility. It was often very difficult to wash certain textiles. It was possible to rub off stains, but that was about it. Nothing was done for the smell. Sponges rich in fragrances People would use scented sponges and herbal pastes to mask any odors rather than wash their clothes. This was done in place of washing. Rice powder was first developed in the 16th century as a means of concealing facial imperfections such as sores that were the result of improper hygiene. To hide their body odor, women would wrap their hair with headscarves or textile ornaments scented with perfume. Dental Hygiene Marie Theresa already had quite a few dental problems when she wed Louis XIV, and they only got worse after the wedding. Chocolate and all things sugary held a special place in her heart. In contrast to what we now know, people in the past did not understand that sugary foods and drinks are detrimental to the health of their teeth. Sugar was a luxury good that only the wealthy could purchase, and to flaunt the fact that they possessed such wealth, sugar was included in the majority of dishes, including the powders that were intended to keep teeth clean. There was also no such thing as dental care during this period, and even if courtiers did their best to keep their teeth clean, their breath was likely to be repulsive due to the lack of access to dental hygiene. Hygiene during menstruation and pregnancy in today's world, sanitary napkins and tampons are the menstrual products of choice for modern women. However, back then, it is most likely that they would have used rags and then thrown them away. It's probable that some folks used the cloth multiple times before cleaning and reusing it. The public was treated to a show by the royal women who were expecting children. It was a free show while the women were giving birth. Everyone was welcome and there was little regard for privacy or maintaining a clean environment. There's no question that many fatalities occurred in royal European houses as a result of this unhygienic way of life. Standards of cleanliness and technical advancements did not significantly improve the lives of many people, even those in royal courts, until the 19th century. Many European royals still change residences nowadays, but this time it's for fun rather than to escape the filth.